Hey YouTubers, what is going on? Thank you for stopping by. I hope this video finds you well. If you're new here, my name is JC. This is the Cuban Redneck DIY channel where we do cooking and grilling videos on Tuesdays and DIY stuff for all types on Fridays. Uh, today we're going to be talking about how often should you change the oil in your vehicle and uh, also, well, basically uh, oil intervals, uh, oil service intervals in general. Uh, this video comes as a response to a video that I recently did uh, in regards to the findings uh, on my 2022 Ford Maverick that prompted me to do an oil change perhaps a little bit earlier or uh, outside of the specified factor specifications. Um, I will warn you this is, might be considered somewhat a rant so if this is not for you do me a favor click on the title of the channel where you will find a dedicated playlist, recipe, drinks and all kinds of stuff. Before we move forward, I guess uh, the right thing to do will be to recap the video. And uh, on the last video, what I did is it was an oil service on my 2022 Ford Maverick. Uh, I changed the oil at the 2500 mile mark. Uh, this is not in line what I was told or what the Ford website says. So anyways, um, at about the thousand mile mark more or less, I was down south of here picking up a part at a Ford dealership for my friend race, uh, my friend's race car. And when I came out of the parts department, uh, there were several people looking at the vehicle. They asked me a bunch of questions, looked at it, this and that and the other. Uh, and one of them happens to be a service advisor. And I told him, hey, listen, this thing has a thousand, almost a thousand miles on it. Should I bring it in for an oil service? And they said, no, you have nothing to worry about to at least 5,000 miles. Okay, that's not in line with what I, you know, my experience. I, I've been tinkling with engines since I'm um, like, I don't know, 12 or 13. My dad used to be a commercial fisherman. If you know anything about that industry, you know that at least once or twice a year, we take the boat out of the water and we take the heads off and we rebuild those guys because this is how you make your money and they have to be on point all the time. Uh, I've also raced and built engines for not only boats, but bikes, cars, and all kinds of stuff. But still, I don't, I don't do the racing thing anymore, but I have a lot of friends that are involved uh, here at the uh, uh, Southern Speedway up in Brennington and Morose Motor Sports Pe uh, Park, although that's going away. Uh, nevertheless, uh, I, I can get feedback from, from the field, from people who are really stressing engines out on a phone call. So, um, as I said, I uh, not only was I told that I had nothing to worry about at the 5,000 mile mark, but if you go to your Ford dashboard, it says that my vehicle needs no service until the 10,000 mile mark. Now, there is some mentioning on the owner's manual about braking period, but most of it is relevant uh, to drivetrain. Uh, don't speed. Uh, don't accelerate too harsh, don't run at constant speed, things of that nature, which is pretty much common sense, but there is nowhere that it says that the oil should be pulled or changed at 500 miles, a thousand miles, or anything of that nature. So what happened was that I was getting ready for a trip and something that I just a habit of doing, I check all my fluid, refill the, uh, the windshield washer thing, uh, I pulled the dipstick, wiped the clean on a paper towel, and I did not like what I saw. Uh, so I took it upon myself, and just for peace of mind, and knowing that an oil change costs $35, it takes about 15 minutes, I went ahead and uh, changed the oil. And what would you know? All the naysayers and all the flat earthers and the EV owners came out in force, contradicting my choice and decision. So. As they say, uh, the truth has no issue being questioned, lies, always have an issue getting challenged. So let's take these arguments one step at a time. If you're not familiar with motor oil, the choices can be overwhelming. But despite the subcategories, it is important that you become familiar with the main types on the market today. And those are conventional oil, sometimes called mineral oil, this is a petroleum-based formulation that relies on viscosity for lubrication and reducing engine wear. The second group or category, it is synthetic or synthetic blend. 
These are oil consistent of a blend of man-made synthetics and conventional oil. Synthetic blends perform and protect your engine better than conventional oils can at a discount compared to full synthetics. The third group is full synthetics. These are the most advanced and they rely on engineered friction modifiers for better protection and a broader temperature range of stability. Regardless of the oil type, oil is degraded or affected by three conditions, that being pollutants, temperature, and how long it's been in use. Believe it or not, there's a lot of pollutants inside an engine in the form of hydrocarbons. This is a byproduct of burning fossil fuels. Force induction engines, such as the one in my Ford Maverick, are more prone to internal pollutants due to the added combustion pressure, which results in more blow-by. Force induction engines, such as the one on my Ford Maverick, also tend to stress the oil from a temperature point of view at the turbo bearings. I'm sure you have seen images like this of turbines glowing red. That requires temperatures north of 1000 degrees, something a naturally aspirated engine would never see. If your oil fails to properly lubricate and cool down these bearings, the results can be catastrophic and expensive. The third is time which is directly related to temperature. If you cook oil, you will realize that some of it will evaporate. One real-life example of this is a police vehicle idling while writing a report of an accident scene or a speed checkpoint. These engines are not only running, but the AC is also running. That means that the engine is under load and the oil is getting degraded. While the vehicle may not be logging any miles of operation, the engine is logging hours of operation. Despite that, the number of comments disputing this fact were substantial. And here's an example. What? Not only that, but when questioned, he doubled down, stating that this was contrary to the entire automotive industry. I don't know about you, but I cannot find any information stating that the automotive industry is in the business of making vehicles that last 300, 400,000 miles. On the contrary, according to my experience, their objective is to sell your new vehicle every four to five years. Not only really that, but please understand that the standard for all commercial, industrial, and marine engines is an hour-based oil service interval, not mileage. And by the way, I appreciate Ford incorporating an hour meter into the instrument cluster. That is something I've had to do in other vehicles I've owned in the past. Another popular group of flat editors are those that are anti-additives. Check out the second comment. Synthetic oil is all they need. The engineers who crafted it will have added it to the instructions to add crap to the car, but they didn't. I guess those engineers are also responsible for all the crappy engineering and the record-breaking recalls we've had in 2022. Do me a favor, leave me a comment below and let me know what would you call somebody who makes such a statement. Nevertheless, the number of independent tests of all types of additives on YouTube alone is truly overwhelming. So I'm not even going to waste any time with that. But further educate yourself by visiting a YouTube channel called Project Farm. There you'll be able to see real life tests on many oil additives and other products. Let's move on because there's a lot more to cover. Another group of naysay or flat earthers are those who need permission from government or an authority to go to the bathroom. What am I talking about? Check out this comment and pay attention to the last sentence. I quote, before you go changing filter, adding additives and drawing conclusions by dipping your finger in the oil, maybe try a fat-based approach. Let's start with taking a sample and sending it to Blackstone Labs. Then he ends up by saying, then after you do what you do, you can send the next sample and find out if changing the oil helped or did harm. What? Yes, my friends, according to the intellectual challenge, changing the oil before the schedule is harmful to your engine. My fellow Americans, we are in trouble. They say that the US education system is ranked 27 in the world. I tell you from what I'm reading, it looks more like 97. So where are all these people getting this information? To be honest, it's all over the place, from AAA to all automaker websites. But as always, flat earthers choose to focus on the soundbite rather than the entire message. Everywhere you read about these outrageous oil change intervals, of 7,500 to 10,000 miles, there is mentioning of driving conditions, and in some cases, label severe driving conditions. They have to mention that because otherwise the class action lawsuits will fly. 
According to oil manufacturers, in other words, the people who make the oil, these prolonged intervals can only be met if you don't drive in hot or cold weather, you don't carry any loads, you don't tow anything, you don't drive at a consistent speed for long periods of time, you don't drive for short distances, you don't drive in a dusty area, you don't get into stop and stop traffic. In other words, you don't drive at all. It is 95 degrees out here in Florida and the street right in front of my house is 140. I wonder if I should call Blackstone Labs and ask them this qualifies for normal driving conditions. However, to be fair and to give credit where credit is due, more than one user has called it for what it is. And the fact is that the Obama EPA forced automakers into this prolonged oil service interval, much like the Biden EPA forced Dodge to cancel the Hemi. The truth is that oil technology has not improved too much since 2010. Yes, today's oils are much, 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 much better, but the improvement is not 200, 300, or 400 percent better. However, oil service interval have gone from 3,000 miles to 10,000 and even 20,000 miles. An explanation of this phenomenon is falling apart at the edges. Why? Because more and more people, most of them professional mechanics, are coming forward and ringing the alarm about extended oil service intervals. As I said earlier, how often you change the oil on your vehicle is determined by many factors, including temperature, terrain, driving habits, driving distance, load, speed, and more. Unlike many here and in other social platforms who have voiced opinions founded on pure falsehood and ignorance, I am not gonna sit here and tell you when you should change the oil on your vehicle. That is because not only is every car different, but every engine is unique. And unless everything I just mentioned above is taken into account, a one-size-fits-all oil service interval means nothing. Instead of paying a lapse on $40, as promoted here several times, consider adding an additional oil service to your annual schedule. I am not a chemist and probably neither are you, so results from a spectral analysis is going to be meaningless. But oil analysis, you think it's necessary? No, I do not. Because I, you just need to change oil that much. There you go. I just change it on time. Yes, sir. I did it on my I did it on one of my, one of my tow trucks in the beginning, and so we'd run the oil out six seven thousand miles. You know, thirty two quarts of oil. Have it tested. It still had ninety six or ninety four percent of its viscosity. And we were just running a basic shell diesel oil. You know, fifteen forty. And so I'm thinking, I don't have a viscosity issue. So then you're doing this analysis of going, and, and you have to run a baseline. You have to do it for a long time because you have to see. I don't know what bearings and everything's made out of. You know how when they look yes, at the metals yes. that are in it? I'm not that smart, right? If you're looking at brass content, exactly. copper content. So as you see the brass content, so here's how many particles we had of brass that time, now we have this. So if you keep doing it over time, you say, okay, bearings are starting to fail at a greater rate because before we only had this much and then this time we had this much, a little less. Now we have a lot more, so now we know a bearing's failing. Well. What are you going to do at that point? Anyways, you can tear the motor down, probably not. You'll wait till the bearing starts knocking a little bit and you'll catch it and then you tow it in, you know, and put a set of bearings in it before you have to put a crankshaft in it, right? But I, I think I think it's an incredible waste of time. But I'm sure there's certain guys that have huge fleets that found it to be great. I just found like, why do I need to do this? It didn't, you know. If Blackstone was to go out of business tomorrow, I can see the quality of vehicles I use car lots going up in less than a decade from an engine point of view. That is because people, once again, will start paying attention to what a dipstick says instead of what social media or a printout says. And yes, labs have their place. If you're developing a new engine or an engine component such as a cam, lifters, piston, piston rings, and things of that nature, I can see where the data about wear and other factors come into play. But know that the manufacturer has already done this for you. They know how long and how much that engine is going to wear before the warranty expires. It is thereafter when it becomes your expense. My friends, keep something in mind. After your house, your vehicle is the next biggest investment you are going to make. Know the auto makers, and especially none of the naysayers or flat earthers mentioned in here, is going to step up to the plate and front the cost of rebuilding an engine. It is up to you to decide what is best to protect your investment. And don't take my word for it, please. I am a nobody. Go to a local mechanic shop, not an oil changing place, and ask technicians who take engines apart on a regular basis what is the best course of action for your particular vehicle, your particular engine, and your driving conditions. 
Thank you for watching and I am sorry for the long run, but I felt that this needed to be said. I will see you next week and hopefully with a more interesting video.